Raptors lose an intense battle to the Heat, 112-109. Welcome to Raptors Tonight. I'm Randy Urban, joined by Leo Routens, Sherman Hamilton, and Jack Armstrong. Leo, I'm going to start with you. Just your thoughts on that uh, Martin Colocal tussle. Well, hey, it changed the game for the Toronto Raptors. Uh, you know, I, I gave him the MVP. I mean, he came in and uh, got in a little scrap. And, hey, here, here's, the, here's the thing, okay? You know, okay, whatever, whatever happened, happened. But here's the reality of this Toronto Raptors team. When they're aggressive, when they're in your face, when they're digging in defensively, they're a very good team. And until that scrap, it, that wasn't there. Now, you can blame it on back-to-back, -back, getting in late, whatever. That's fine. That's all the circumstances that are in, in play here. But it took something like that to motivate them, to get them going. And that changed the course of the game. It changed the flavor of the game. So, you know, uh, you know and, and you love the fact that this kid comes in and, you know, he's already contributed in a, in a nice way. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, yeah, he got in a scrap. But, but, but I mean, he's, he's a guy that he doesn't back down. He's going to play. He's going to do whatever he has to do to help the team win. Uh, and, and that, that whole thing just ignited the team and gave him a chance to win. Mm -hmm. Sherm though, do you agree with the ejection? Because it felt like to me, Martin clearly initiated that contact. I don't know. He got his, his, he got all bent out of shape because Coloco was going down and, and reached for his Jersey. And then, you know, Martin steps to him and what's Coloco going to do? He's coming up off the ground. The guy's in his face. Like at what point you have to, you know, defend yourself. And he didn't really touch him. Yeah, I think what was missed, too, was originally when Martin had him hemmed up with one leg when he got the call for the foul, Colocal's hand incidentally caught him across the face. And then on the way down again, Colocal just losing his balance, is reaching and just kind of grabs him out the back of his jersey. Mm -hmm. And now Martin has lost it. He's just upset about all of that, even though it's incidental contact. And the interesting thing is when he approached Colocal when Colocal was on the ground, I'm not sure what the officials expected Coloco to do. A guy stands over you like that. You're going to get up and get him off of you. You don't allow people to stand over you like that. So I don't understand what the officials expected Coloco to do. Maybe he's supposed to just sit there and allow the guy to stand over him. But I didn't agree with Coloco getting ejected at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought Martin should have got ejected. He was an instigator. He continued to provoke the situation and stand over Coloco. So he had every right to be ejected, but I'm not sure what the officials wanted Coloco to do other than what he did to avoid getting tossed out of the game. And, and to Leo's point, I'm glad Christian Coloco did that and stood up for himself and, and showed not only Martin, but the league that, yeah, I'm a rookie, but you're just not going to push me over and run over me and treat me like I'm a rookie. I'm going to stand up for myself. And it, it was a spark for the Raptors. It was a, one of those jump start situations, but they've got to figure something out. Three games in, not good starts in terms of the defensive end of the floor, and you don't want it to be a trend. So they're going to have to figure out how to jump start themselves earlier in the game on the defensive end. Yeah. Jack, your thoughts on that whole altercation, and did you feel any kind of tension before tip off? Randy, uh, I don't know if I can say anything more than what uh, Sherman Leo just articulated. I thought they did a great job with it. I did not feel any, uh, you know, like tension before the game whatsoever. Uh, but I, again, I thought Leo and Sherm nailed it. I don't know if there's much more I could say about the situation that was already said. All I'll say is common sense is supposed to overrule the rules. Yeah. And to Sherm's point about the officials, I don't think they use good common sense because it's clear as day that one guy was an initiator and one guy reacted and was just reacting out of self-defense. So, uh, I'm confused. Okay, well, maybe not uh, tension before the game, but during the game, you know, Hero goes at Achua, scores a layup, and then gives him the you're too small uh, celebration, which I find hilarious because Chua would just dunk on that guy's face. And I'm really getting sick of this, like, you're too small celebrations. It's like, it's irritating me. I don't know what it is. But that seemed to be the, the, the spark, in my opinion, that kind of uh, started the tension between these two teams. Well, I, I think in today's NBA, you can get away with doing that because you're not allowed to whack a guy. Yeah. You know, if a guy did that many years ago and did that to you, you know, you, uh, there'd, be, there'd be payback. There'd be justice. Yeah. But you're not allowed to do that anymore. So guys think they could take liberties and talk smack like that and embarrass guys. Because there's no, uh, there's no circum, there's no 
uh, I, you're, repercussions. I'm a word. Yeah, repercussions. Exactly. Yeah. So retribution me, is uh, gone. But I guess I guess on Monday night the scoreboard will be the uh, true teller. And I think uh, if the Raptors can build off of how they played down the stretch here in the second half, uh, I like their chances on Monday night. Leo, what would you do if somebody shorter than you gave you the uh, you're too small, <laughs> silly? Well, it, it, okay, here. Here's the difference between, like, you know, Jack said it, that, you know, back in the day, it wasn't just me. It was me and my teammates. Yeah. You want to talk junk like that? That's fine. One of my teammates will say, hey, come here, run them off my screen. Run them over here. And it's not going to happen right away, okay? But we're going to take your head off, okay? You're going to lose a few teeth if you're going to talk out of that mouth and chirp. So, it, but it's a different it's a different, a different world, right? You can't do that anymore. So you see a lot of guys chirping. A lot of guys, and a lot of guys are talking trash because nothing can happen to them. They know they can talk, right? Nobody's going to do anything. And, you know, that's like... Uh, it's like Twitter, right? Anonymous hate is great because nobody yeah. can touch you. When you're yeah. on the floor and you know that nobody's going to pop you, you can shoot your mouth off all you want. So guys do. So to me, it's annoying. Like I said, some of these guys that are talking, I mean, you have no business talking. Yeah. You just like to smack them one, but unfortunately you can't do it. Yeah. But Precious got him back later on. And That's right. Back. That's Too right. small, so he got him back. Yeah. Yeah. I just find that stuff hilarious. I mean, it, I, this is why this is, you know, for me, this is why you just shut your mouth and play basketball because on the very next play, Scotty literally jumped over him, right? He jumped over him. He hurt his ankle, but he like, and then, and then precious gives it back to him. So you, you look silly in my opinion. Anyway, Sherm, you mentioned the uh, you know, the, the, the team starting off slow. I want to talk about these droughts that they're having scoring wise in these first three games. Have you noticed any patterns there? Uh Foul trouble has been an issue. I mean, in yeah. this game, obviously, Freddie and Pascal get those fouls in the first half. And, and that affects your rhythm. It affects the team's overall rhythm. Scotty gets banged up. Now, offensively, you're trying to find it from different areas. And it was great to see Gary Trent Jr. play the way he did, get his offense going. And Precious had a good game off the bench. Mm -hmm. But the consistency and the continuity that you're looking for it's impacted by the foul trouble from two of your main guys and Scotty not being on the floor. So there, there have been some uh, factors involved in that. And, and Pascal, again, in foul trouble, which is something that we've seen consistently in the early parts of the season. We hope it's, it's not a trend that's going to continue. But I think that impacts the offensive end. But the concerns to me are more on the defensive end. When you, you allow teams to get out in the first quarter and shoot over 60% at times and end up over 50% in the first quarter on their floor, they established confidence in a team like Miami who hasn't won at home yet this season and just played last night like the Raptors did. You gave them a lot of confidence to start this game. And, and that's something you don't want to do to a more veteran leadership type team like that. Mm -hmm. so, so Jack about the stops and the lack of stops that you're seeing it sometimes, you know, what, what's going on defensively? Are, are there any specifics that, that are standing out to you about that? Well, I think this is a league that is so based upon stopping people on the perimeter. Yeah. And uh, it's early in the season. Even though you have your pretty much your entire team back, uh, you still got to iron out communication and all the different switches. And you got to contain the dribble. Uh, there's been a lot of splits. Uh, so to me, I think just getting better at keeping the ball in front of you on the switch, uh, ball containment, I think that – because when you don't contain the balls, we all know uh, guys are driving downhill. You got to send a second defender, help, recovery, rotations. It gets chaotic. You give up three balls. I thought Miami did a really good job tonight uh, spraying the ball around very quickly. And look, hey, look, they lost their first two home games. And now they're playing Toronto tonight and they play them again on Wednesday. You know, you don't want to get off to an 0 3 start. At home. So I thought they had great urgency and determination, not only on the defensive end, but on the offensive end. And they were just sharper than Toronto. But uh, to your point, Randy, yeah, no, I, I think that uh, you got to tighten the screw. As much as offense is erratic at times, defense can't be. Yeah. And I think for the Raptors, uh, particularly when you look at the Raptors last season in the new year, where their defense was with, with top five in defensive efficiency. Uh, it became habitual and consistent. They're mm -hmm. not there yet, but they'll get there. Yeah. 
Wait, 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 wait. They're not there yet with 79 games to go. They're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's an accurate statement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, Utah Jazz are, are 2-0 and, and and San Antonio beat Philadelphia tonight. So it's the, the, the NBA is upside down right now. It's, it's early. Um, but let's talk about Precious Achua, Leo, because he, he really came out of a shell. I thought we really saw the, you know, the fruits of his labor from the summertime in, in this game. He was, he was much more comfortable out there. What I like about him is he's shooting without hesitation whatsoever. What kind of season do you think he is capable of having? Well, we saw the second half of last year, what kind of season he's capable of having. And, and, and it can only be better. Uh, remember, he's a young guy, right? This is his first uh, foray into being an important part of a team uh, starting last year. So he's just building on that. And, uh, you know, I like his game. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he's got – he puts the ball on the floor nicely to get a shot. He's doing that a little bit more, uh, the pull-up, the turnaround, as well as the three. Uh, he's strong enough to take that ball to the basket and finish. Uh, you'd never want to get away from that because, you know, with his first step, he can explode by people and finish. Uh, and then just, just be a physical presence at, at both ends of the floor. So, you know, I really like his, I really like what he can do. Uh, and the whole thing right now, just like with anybody else, it's just being consistent and doing it every single night. Mm -hmm. Sherm, were you uh, much of a trash talker when you played? No. I mean, if you talk to me, I'd talk back, but I wouldn't initiate it. You would. I mean, no? that's not my stuff. No, okay. it's not my stuff. With you, you, yes, but not on the court with other people that matter. <laughs> Leo, did you say anything? I was. Uh, I was like, sure. If I, I wasn't going to start it, but if you started it, I'd have no problem finishing it. All right. What about you, Jack? On the coaching on the coaching sidelines, you you get well, animated at, at players. I know well, what I'm coaching. That, I, I get yeah. I get heated. Very salty language. Let's just say that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for doing this, guys. I really appreciate it. Next game for the Raptors, Monday night, still in Miami. Tip-off goes at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then.